Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. On today's video, we are going to be going through some of the smallest rockets to ever launch a payload into orbit. We are going to be both doing build time lapses of every vehicle and also going to be launching the five smallest orbital class rockets in today's video. So let's get straight into our very first rocket, the Juno. Two, the Juno 2! So, the Juno 2 is a very, very small rocket, which is capable of carrying a grand total of 41 kilograms to low Earth orbit. So, we're going to be starting the vehicle assembly building to uh, assemble this thing. The Juno 2 uses the same upper stage as the Juno 1, or the top stage thing. It's a, kind of a mess, but, uh, you know, 50s, right? Uh, so... The way it works is they have the payload which is on the top of the uh, top of the, the rocket there at the one singular SRB below it. And then there's a cluster of three SRBs below that and then a cluster of 11 SRBs next to it. It's a really wacko upper few stages. Really weird, but this thing um, this thing flew 10 times and it was retired in, in 1961. So it made its way into the 60s, I guess. I don't know if that's that's good, but this is uh, this is the biggest rocket that will be on our on our list today. It's actually kind of crazy how how much these rockets vary in size. Um, we're counting down by payload, so the smallest rocket will be the, the smallest uh, payload capable. Um, like so, some of these rockets are absolutely massive, like five, ten tons of just launch vehicle. Um, and you can only carry 40 kilograms and other ones are like just two tons and you can carry virtually the same This is definitely one of the you know, th that's the difference between like, you know 60s technology and some of the or 50s technology and some of the newer ones, right? Because um, these are like hypergolic fuels to the max and just inefficiency, but yes Space right space cool um, yeah, the, the Juno 2 is definitely on the on the less efficient side um, So essentially the way it works is it has that that bottom stage um, and then which will propel the thing onto a ballistic trajectory at which point the uh, the, uh, the upper stage will ignite the SRB cluster at Appalapse. It's basically how you kind of fly a normal KSP mission to be honest. But we have finished construction of the Juno 2 and are now on the launch pad. We can marvel at our amazing creation. It's not even that great. But I'm um, going to start up our engine and we are now in the air. Yay, launch number one. Much wow. Uh, I guess talking of wow, if you are enjoying the video, we have an amazing subscribe button. Epic. Yes, subscribe if you want. I If you don't, don't. But thank you everyone who has subscribed. We're getting close to 10k subs and that is awesome. Thank you to everyone who has become members and Patreons and joined our Discord and all that epic stuff. You guys are awesome. Thanks everyone for, for all the support. But uh, we are now in our gravity turret and our bottom stage is basically already depleted. And there is... Ooh, ooh, not quite. Not quite, almost, any day now. Well, uh, that was awkward. There it goes. And then we can stage it away, and then we have the upper stage. So these SRBs are spin stabilized, so our tire fairing thingy will begin to spin up, and then it will uh, eject the SRBs in kind of dramatic fashion. But yeah, the bottom stage, it's, it really only needs to get the thing out of the atmosphere, and then the, the SRBs will it'll carry it carry pretty far. And wait, there they, oh my gosh, there they go, 11 SRBs firing. On the second stage, they are going to be firing for a very, very short amount of time. This is played back in, in normal speed. And then we will stage it away. Weird, awkward thing I'll explain in just a second. There goes the third stage with the three SRBs. And then once they are depleted, the fourth stage with the singular SL SRB will propel our payload into orbit. And oh my gosh, guys, so close, so close. So oh, spinny, spinny camera stuff and orbit. Epic. Welcome to orbit, everybody. Our first of the five launches has been completed. So without further ado, after deployment of the payload, we can go say hi to our next rocket, which is my personal favorite on this list. I don't know, maybe the Juno one is also quite cool. Spoiler alert, it's on here. Um, <laughs> this rocket is just really cool. It is the Lambda 4S, uh, which is a Japanese rocket. Uh, so the uh, Lambda 4S, um, is a uh, it's a four stage rocket i guess it, it depends four or five stage if you count the the uh, strap on boosters as a stage but this is all srb no liquid fuel um and essentially this thing is really small this is on the more efficient end uh, this thing can take 26 kilograms to low earth orbit 
and uh, like I said, it's a first stage design. It uh, is kind of similar. All these rockets kind of follow a similar flight profile. The bottom stage or two usually just propel it out of the atmosphere, and then it has an upper stage of SRBs, which kind of like shoot it into orbit basically um and that, this one is no exception so uh the bottom two stages as well as the strap on boosters will propel this thing out of the atmosphere and then the top two stages which are both srbs will propel the thing into orbit or circularize or do a kick at apple apps um if you didn't notice while i was building this thing i added some dead fuel tanks or empty fuel tanks rather um, onto the thing, just because the, the stock SRBs in game aren't quite the right size, so I just kind of had to add some modifications. Also, the, the fourth stage, which is supposed to be SRB, is really a spark with a liquid fuel because there aren't any SRBs solid enough, small enough. But yes, epic, KSP, janky, and launch! Yeah, this thing is launched at an angle because awesome, right? So we're going to play this launch at one time speed because this thing is an absolute zoomer. So just about eight seconds into flight, the strap on boosters are going to deplete and be ejected. And then around uh, just over 30 seconds into flight, the uh, the core SRB will be uh, will be completely drained, and then it will fire up the second stage, which will burn for around 40 seconds or a little less than that. And then it will uh, cut, and then it'll be time to coast on up to lap laps. And there goes the core stage, just a few seconds ago. And now the upper stage, or the second stage rather, is going to be burning its fuel. This is where the G's start to get kind of crazy. Because there's a lot of thrust and not a lot of weight, and here we go. We hopefully the payload could take like 10 Gs or almost 10 Gs, but hey, Kerbal, right? Kerbal's can Kerbal stuff can take anything, right? It's it's pretty hefty. So there it goes. The second stage is now depleted, and it will be jettisoned momentarily. So the third and fourth stage are basically just there to do a little bit of an apple-apps kick to circularize the orb uh, payload and the rocket. And yes, here we go. Very very shortly going to fire up that third stage in just did I just second stage earlier. I don't know. It's like really late right now, guys. So. Sorry if this commentary is kind of all over the place, but oh my gosh, SRB has been fired up. It is going to be all one time speed, by the way. Going to be going full speed ahead now uh, at our app laps of 120 kilometers. And speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, getting ready to jettison that and get our SRB, our first stage, right? Which is totally an SRB. Um, there it goes, our totally SRB, which will. Uh, just kind of silly being an SRB, I didn't throttle it, and I burned all the fuel out of full thrust. So, it, KSP janky. Um, it's, it was actually quite a challenge to build some of these rockets, because the parts are just, there aren't small enough parts for some of them. It's, yeah, we're, you know, we get, when you get small rockets. But there you go, orbit. We have made orbit much epic, epicness. So, here we go, jettison the payload, and now we can move on to the next rocket on the list which is the vanguard rocket so it was very close between the third and second place it was a matter of 0.2 kilograms difference between the two rockets um the vanguard can carry 11.2 kilograms and our second place rocket can only carry 11 kilograms so gg vanguard you did it um so the vanguard is a um it's a four-stage solution. Uh, it is the most conventional rocket, I would say, probably on this list. It's not like some crazy SRB concoction or some ridiculous, like, the Juno rockets, which have the wacko staging. Um, so this thing uh, has a bottom stage, obviously. Um, then it has the Abe... Did I say four stages? I lied. I lied. It's only three stages. I just realized that. I should cut that out. Meh too high production value here at pilot studios so uh bottom stage is the it's a bottom stage um and then the second stage is the able uh second stage um which is the first ever introduction of the able second stage in the aj10 engine so that is quite cool and then the third stage is srv right what, what could you do without an SRV? tiny rocket but there it goes absolutely leaping off the pad actually I had to throttle the engine down a little bit um, during the ascent just for efficiency reasons and so yeah, but didn't like just go flying off the you know It'd be great. Okay, so this thing is also quite cool. This thing this one is this one's quite fun to build and fly So I'm gonna do our gravity turn. This one is like I said the most like a conventional rocket It did you know, it's just circular. It's it's, it's, it's it has a more normal flight profile so um, as the bottom stage you'll get ready to separate and deplete or deplete and separate would probably be a better way of saying that epic words um there it go and there goes the able upper stage which has now been lit and will carry the thing most of the way to orbit 
And then that third upper stage SRB will finish it up by circularizing our, our payload. And this SRB, like basically all the SRBs on this list, are spin stabilized because the guidance on SRBs is effectively difficult. I mean, it's sexy stuff. So. Um, the real Vanguard really did not do well. It like it had like I think 11 or 10, 11 launches I think, or 10 or it was 10 or 11, and like eight of them were failures. So yeah, not not great record there. But you're gonna pop the fairing up, and now we can get ready to the real um the real Vanguard actually uh, spins up using the able stage, and then it will uh, separate, and then it will fire up the SRB. There it goes. We fun. Fun, fun, fun orbits. Orbits are fun. Oh, my camera freaking out. And just after a few more seconds of burning, the SRB will deplete. Welcome to orbit, everybody. That is our third orbit. Yay, by payload. And now we are going to do the Juno 2 again. What? What is going on here? Yeah, no, we're doing it's the Juno 1. It uses the exact same upper stage. Um, the exact same state solution, so, uh, yeah, it just has a little fairing on it, so. The Juno 1, very cool rocket, because it, in fact, was the very first rocket to launch a American satellite. The Explorer Run, Explorer 1, that was weird accent, or weird, trying to say it fancily, so. The Explorer 1, very cool mission. Juno 1 did do the honor of launching that, and it was the second satellite ever to be launched into orbit, I believe, just if not that long, only a few weeks after Sputnik. And this thing weighed like 5% of what the R7 weighed. Um, so, efficiency, right? Good job, Werner. Um, yeah, this thing, um, this thing was on, like, it was basically a successor to the V2 missile, uh, which hopefully I don't give, yeah. Uh, which was, you know, what Werner von Braun was working on in the, um, uh, the, the Germany people, right? You know, back the old, the other, the German people who, we, who shall not be named for monetization reasons. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Kind of weird that that's, that, that kind of technology is used to get American satellites into space, considering, the, or into orbit, considering the previous political situation five years I don't know, i'm trying to say it in like the most nice terms but hey welcome to the launch pad yeah that time 40s were weird uh 40s and 50. so um we have now i think we gotta beat the soviets even though we did but um we are now in the air this thing has the lowest twr off the pad of any rocket in today's video and it is going to have a very similar uh flip profile to the juno 2 uh the bottom stage is the uh, the redstone uh, for for this rocket and uh, it's, it's basically all it does is it gets the thing out of the atmosphere and also gives it just a little bit of horizontal speed but the the SRBs do most of the work to uh, get the mo most of the horizontal speed uh, rather to get the payload in to orbit and this thing is just it's weird it looks weird uh, the top looks weird of it I mean the bottom looks kind of normal but the top very 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 strange um, but either way uh, we're getting ready to deplete the uh, the redstone. Uh, bottom stage, which will be uh, separated very shortly. Redstone's a cool, cool stage because it also flew Alan Shepard on his first suborbital flight, so that's quite cool. Um, or America's first suborbital flight um, of a human, right? So, and uh, any second now, it's like a history lesson, right? Crazy. I know. I assume most people. I'm probably getting all the his history all wrong. Um, I don't know, like, yeah, some of these flight profiles are the rockets, something's probably inaccurate, I'm probably gonna get melted in the comments section, but hey, especially probably with the Japanese ones. Um, like, oh boy, but uh, hey, uh, what else am I if not inaccurate? Um, so we are now going to use the, uh, the, the we gotta spin it up, right, because it's been stabilized, that uh, the top part, the, the thing we still, the, 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 the extra, they're growing, words, I don't know what I'm talking about, words, and now you do the weird separation thing, which I said I was explaining later, but I never did, so the reason that's like that is because, in reality, there's like a little divider between the three SRBs and the inside, and then the 11 SRBs on the outside, and when I were to separate that divider uh, in KSP, it gets all crackeny, so I kind of have to time warp around, I guess I could have not put that divider in, and like, it wouldn't have had to be all janky, but I don't know if it looks realistic or fly re flies realistic. You can't even see it, so I don't know. But hey, we're at our first rocket, our first place, the smallest rocket, um, which was, at, this is a really cool rocket, the SS-520, the SS. I don't know, kind of a 40s Germany, right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that's where my mind went from thinking about that, but this thing is very, very simple to make. It also has three SRBs clipped together, 
um, because I can, there are no SRBs, unless I wanted to make this thing massive, none of the stock SRBs really gave us the TWR to, to what, what we really needed. So this thing is basically, it's a sounding rocket with a second and third stage on top of it, essentially. And this was just kind of like in a fun experiment they did in 2017. Um, Japanese to see how small they can get orbital rocket and they did a very good job. They made this thing. It's puny It is absolutely puny and the parts in KSP are not even small enough to be able to make it so that the nose cone isn't really accurate But launch it is launched sideways. This thing is really cool um, It actually launched around the same time as Falcon Heavy, so that's kind of cool um, So this thing and it's so essentially the way it works is it has a SRB on the bottom which will burn for just over 30 seconds which will the re real one literally produces over six G's of, uh, of acceleration for those 30 seconds. And I mean, we have three SRBs clipped together in case we, already, we barely get half of that, right? So this thing is zooming and the bottom stage will accelerate to just over two kilometers a second and get it out of the atmosphere, which is essentially like the flight, prof flight profile of everything else. But this thing is just puny, absolutely puny, puny thing. Like you could fit this thing in a Falcon fairing and it weighs like two tons, I think. It weighs nothing. It's puny. It tiny. It's hard to describe how tiny this rocket is. But uh, after the bottom stage burns out, you're going to drift on up your apple apps. And then the second and third stage are quite similar to the lambda, the lambda, all the lambda, the lambda for S uh, second and third stage. So it is a uh, an SRB which will fire up. We're not even out of the atmosphere, by the way. If you didn't notice, we kind of have to get out of the atmosphere with those second and third stage. Nothing to see here. Um, so you fire up the second stage, which will get us up quite the way bit to orbit, and then the third stage, which will help a lot, which is supposed to be an SRB, but I did the same Spark uh, Oscar B setup thing just because SRBs are not small enough in KSB. Like, I'm literally using the smallest SRB right now. I guess, like, a Secatron. That's not really an SRB, and that wouldn't, that, that, that wouldn't fit, right? So, and it doesn't have radial attack. It doesn't have, like, good attachment points. But either way, we have fired up the stage and it is going 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 and there yay we made it we made it orbit yes that is five good orbits five to be honest i think really cool rockets so i hope you enjoyed the video hope that was fun i don't know it's kind of fun to make so but here's all the members want to become a member get the join button be awesome if you do big shout out to the the hundred dollar member guy yo you're crazy you're yo yo thank you Thank you. You are too awesome. Um, and thank you. Shout out to all the Patreons as well. You guys are all awesome. But that's going to be the end of today's video. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please write a comment to the video. Once again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.